This camera is absolutely a must-have if you worry about fire in your facility. The potential benefit that we are looking at is saving life, preventing accidents, and the cost to benefit ratio that you get by having these cameras, it's enormous. So if you want an infrared camera, FLIR is the proven industry standard for infrared cameras. So there's nowhere else you have to go. Hot works and waste fires are on the rise and they're costing millions. Local authority research conducted by Material Focus discovered that in 2023, there were 1,200 battery fires in bin lorries and waste sites compared to 700 in 2022. That's an increase of 71%. Meanwhile, research by CE Safety found that of 259 construction-related fires in 2022-2023, 79 resulted from hot works. Not only is this dangerous, Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire both reported injuries due to hot works, but it's expensive. Zurich reports receiving £250 million worth of claims pertaining to hot works fires and has seen insurance claims for £20 million relating to battery sparked waste fires. Surely there's a simple, safe, cost effective way to prevent these fires. Traditionally, waste, recycling and hot work sites have relied on visual inspections, smoke and heat detection and sprinkler systems to prevent or tackle fires. But these methods are far from ideal. For instance, generally sprinkler systems and smoke detectors are only activated once a fire is burning, in which case significant damage is likely to have already occurred. What these facilities need is a 24-7 monitoring solution that can detect and alert teams to the small temperature rises that may spark fires. Thankfully, Nazim, Teledyne Flare's application engineer for industrial automation, is here to tell us about one such solution, the Flare A40 thermal camera. Hi Nazim, welcome, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Katie. No problem. So you're here today to talk about the Flare A40 thermal imaging camera and how it can be used in fire detection for instances in waste disposal sites, um, hot works. Can you explain why fires are on the rise? So uh, if you look at the usage of lithium-ion batteries in household today, it's going exponentially up. We have our mobile devices, we have our iPads, and these batteries in these devices, they end up at a waste disposal site. And if they get run over by a vehicle, it's, it causes fire. And these fire, to prevent early detection of these fire when the thermal runaway occurs, the best possible way is to use an infrared camera. With an infrared camera, you can see a hot spot as the temperature trend goes up, you can detect a fire. The same goes for construction site, where you can have a chemical that can ignite, or if you have a wire that's overheating because of loading, and this overheating of the wire can be caught by a thermal camera that can give you an alarm at an early stage. So what specifically about the A40 fixed systems applies itself to this application better than, than the ones we've all seen, the handheld pistol trigger? The fixed cameras have the advantage that they can be used for 24-7 monitoring. Mm -hmm. So you can fix this camera and this camera can work as a standalone device. So the configuration that's loaded on this camera is called a smart sensor. The reason we, why we call it a sensor is because this can work in your normal automation environment. And at the same time, you can put it at a location and then this can do a 24-7 monitoring for you for that site and as a hotspot develops, this has the ability, you can go into the web interface, do your setting, do the temperature setting. And as a, as a hotspot develops, you can get an alarm. And this device can measure temperature from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 1000 degrees Celsius. Waste fires caused by lithium ion batteries cost UK fire and waste operators approximately £158 million pounds a year, the Corn Environmental Services Association. And Zurich said it received about £250 million worth of claims pertaining to hot works. 
between 2016 and 2018. Why are waste recycling and hot works facilities struggling so much to prevent these incidents? So as we know, the use of lithium and battery is going exponentially up. We cannot decrease that. What we could do is waste separation, but we all know how that works. We can, it cannot be 100%. So the only way to prevent fire at a waste depot or a waste processing plant or a recycling plant is to detect that terminal runaway, what I was talking about. And once you have that terminal runaway, as you said in the introduction, that use of sprinklers, these are all after what you can do after you have a fire. So at the early stage, the only way you can detect a fire is by using a thermal camera. And you see when the temperature is going up, you detect it right when it's going up and you use the countermeasures to prevent that fire. So actually what you're saying is by using these cameras, we can actually detect the fire before it even starts. And so companies can save even more money by preventing any damage caused by fires that may not have been picked up until the smoke alarms have gone off. Exactly. You use the countermeasure at the right time in order to prevent the fire spreading. We all know fire is like a chain reaction. The sooner you contain it, the less damage you're going to have. So traditionally, companies could be using manpower to actually go around the site visually inspecting, and they don't have this sixth sense where they can pick up a fire before it even starts. Even with handheld thermal imaging cameras, those are scanned at one point in time where these can keep running 24-7. Yes, exactly. I mean, you can have these uh, handheld cameras. They are good for certain application. But if you're talking about 24-7 monitoring, mm-hmm. you need a thermal camera. And it's like having a sixth sense, adding a sixth sense to your facility where you can monitor temperature and detect the thermal runaway mm-hmm. right at the beginning. So the cost to a company of conducting manual temperature checks. That's very labour-intensive. People are getting involved having to walk around the site. With these cameras, you don't need any of that. So the capability that this camera offers is beyond what a human can see or detect. So we are talking about measuring temperature and having that temperature as a physical value and having an alarm based on that physical value. That's beyond the human capability to do that, right? I mean, we only see in the visual spectrum, not in the infrared spectrum. And with this camera, you can see in the infrared spectrum and you can detect heat as it is. So, Nazim, we've touched on lithium batteries um, as a source of fire, um, but also decomposing waste can also generate heat pockets inside waste pile heaps, which can't easily be seen. And there's other applications for these. Yeah, sure. I mean, you'll be surprised to the things that can be a potential fire hazard. Like you said, decomposing waste can also ignite. You can have chemicals that can cause a potential fire. Even sawdust can be a fire hazard. Yeah, true. It's really flammable. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, I like dusts, paper mills, that those sort of areas, um, I could see it being really useful. Yeah, yeah. Coal, for instance, coal, pile of coal, could also be a potential fire hazard. Okay, Nazim, so you're saying that automated thermal cameras, like the FLIR A40, could offer a solution to these problems and potentially save millions. Yes, infrared cameras, they are a proven technology in early fire detection. They have been used a lot and the usage is going exponentially high. So it's the... What you said, the commercial aspect, but it's also about the insurance premium these days. And also, you can potentially save lives with these things. I mean, we know how fire can spread. Cameras in Flares A series, so not just the A40, but the A400, the A700 and so on, tend to offer either an image streaming configuration or an advanced smart sensor configuration. Now, These A40 cameras feature an advanced smart sensor configuration. What is that and why is it useful for fire prevention? So the infrared cameras, they have a wide variety of usage in today's industrial environment. So these cameras can be used for ceiling inspection. But for ceiling inspection, you need a more complicated programming at the back end where there is a computer involved that gets the image from this camera and does the analysis. And for that, we have the streaming configuration. But we also have wide usage, especially in early fire detection, where 
The customer just need a simple web interface, a simple camera as a sensor where you can configure your regions of interest, your alarm levels, and then you mount your camera at the location where you want it. You set the focus using this tool and you let the camera do its job. And it runs 24 seven. And whenever you have a fire, it gives you an alarm. Okay. So is that included with the camera when you purchase it then? The A40 camera comes standard in the smart sensor configuration and it's standard inbuilt in the camera. You connect to a computer, you do the setting, and then you remove your computer and then the camera will do its job. And does that integrate easily with the existing sort of camera systems that people might already have? Yes, you can. I mean, you can put it using the RDSP stream. You can use it into your existing PMS system. You can use the OnVid stream, or you can use it using the Modbus or Ethernet IP. You can use it into your automation environment. You can use the digital out at the back of the camera. So this camera has PoE, power over Ethernet. And we also have the digital out. So this camera has two digital outs. So you can use the digital out, for instance, connected to your sprinkler system or for your alarm or light alarm. So you can configure them directly from the web interface. And whenever the temperature will go above the threshold that you have set, you are going to get an alarm. Okay. Yeah. So um, what, what are the alarms? What type of alarm will I get if something happens on the plant or on a site? How will I know? there's a problem so um you can set different levels of alarms mm -hmm. so you can you can make an roi and you can define that okay if the temperature goes above 100 degrees celsius i want an orange alarm if the temperature goes above 150 degrees celsius i want a red alarm mm -hmm. so you can you can categorize it using your automation system for that alarm or you can use the digital out of the camera the camera has two digital outs so these two could be used for two different levels of alarms to to alert the, the people. So you mentioned there that this camera has a web interface. Could you just tell us a little bit more about that? So as I said, I mean, you can connect a laptop to the network and then you can access this camera. So you go into your web browser, you type the IP address of the camera, and then the web interface opens. And on the web interface, we have the ROI. So you have a spot tool you can use. You can put a rectangle you can put a polygon or a measurement mask, or you can select the color palette that you want. You can select an isotherm, and isotherm helps you define the size of the hotspot that you're looking for. And based on that, you can have an alarm. In the alarm setting, you have an option to save an image if you get an alarm, or you can even save a video. Or you can even have a pre-trigger video where a 5-second or a 10-second video gets recorded so that you can look back and see what was it that triggered the alarm. And you also have options like you can save the picture in an FTP server or you can have the picture emailed to you or you can have the picture saved on the internal memory of the camera. The internal memory of the camera is, of course, limited. You can save up to 100 images in the internal memory. The images that you save, it's JPEG, but it's FLIR radiometric JPEG. What this means is you can use these images in the FLIR ecosystem of softwares that we have, like FLIR Research Studio, FLIR Thermal Studio, and you can open up these images and you can do thermal analysis on them as well. So you could produce reports and things like that. You can that. produce report and things like that, exactly, yeah. So what other features do you think are important to the end user? So for integration, the end user can also use Modbus. So this camera has Modbus client and server mode. This can easily be integrated in an automation environment. So for instance, if the customer wants an analog output based on the temperature values, there are accessories available that can be connected and you can get a 0 to 20 volt analog output from this. The camera also has REST API, so you can develop an application using the REST API. You can control fully control the camera using the REST API. You can also call for images and the images that will be called will be uh, FLIR radiometric JPEG images. And the camera also has MQTT. So all the major protocols that exist today 
it's it's covered by this camera, so it's very easy to integrate. So um, what about security issues surrounding the cameras? Because obviously they're integrated into people's networks and things. Yes, of course. I mean, this camera is looking at usually critical assets, so you want it to be secured. So we have the, the web interface of the camera, as I said, which is the key to all the setting. The web interface of the camera is protected by a password. So you can have a password and you can also have user levels. So you can define a user level so that a user cannot change the setting that you have set. So you can have an admin or you can have a normal user who cannot change your ROI or change the temperature threshold. That can be important. So I've read a little bit about the multi-image streaming. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So this camera has a as a visual camera as well at the front and a thermal camera. So practically you can grab to both of these streams, the visual and the thermal stream, and have it displayed on, an, on, a, on a monitor. But what's also interesting is that all the, para, all the protocols that I have mentioned, like Modbus or REST API or MQTT, <laughs> they all can work simultaneously. So this camera can give an image on a display, a video on a display, a live image. And at the same time, if you have connected it to the PLC, it can send the temperature information to the PLC or alarm information to the PLC. If there is a computer that's pulling the REST API data, it can send the REST API data as well. So all this can work simultaneously. And you mentioned before about the camera working sort of like a switch so it can turn on or turn off a process or yes this camera the this board that you see at the back this is for the digital out so when you are configuring the alarm you can select one of the two digital outs this digital out is connected to your alarm circuitry this board here acts like a switch so basically you will have a complete circuit and in that circuit it will pass through the two wires here and it will act like a switch so as soon as the temperature threshold will exceed, the switch will turn on. The switch will turn on means the circuit will be completed and the alarm will turn on. It's very easy to integrate this way. Right, Nazim. So finally, can you tell me why, and the people watching this video, why we should invest in a FLIR A40 thermal imaging camera? So with the FLIR A40 camera, we have a solution in the market that's truly affordable and simple to integrate. The potential benefit that we are looking at is saving life, preventing accidents, and the cost-to-benefit ratio that you get by having these cameras, it's enormous. This product is really a game changer for companies that have products that can potentially be a fire hazard. And as you all know, there's, these days we have electrical power that can be a fire hazard. We have materials that can be a fire hazard. And as we've been discussing, the lithium-ion battery. Mm -hmm. So this camera is absolutely a must-have if you worry about fire in your facility. So, Nazim, if you were to sell me this camera in one sentence, what would you say? So if you want an infrared camera, FLIR is the proven industry standard for infrared cameras. So there's nowhere else you have to go. So... Remember, you can read more about FLIR's A40 Advanced Smart Sensor Thermal Cameras by clicking the link in the description, where you'll also find an option to purchase. And do remember to look out for our other FLIR videos. Alright, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.